Good morning, God's blessings. We continue on with our our Bible study, One God, Many Gods, and today is lesson 14. It's actually the second to last um, lesson that we have. Uh, so stay tuned next week. We're going to announce what we will be continuing on with. But lesson 14 is we're going to look at the religion of Rastafarianism. And so this little sheet right here is in the bin underneath the portico. You can also uh, download it via our website underneath Sunday School. And so we're going to take a look here. But first, we are going to begin by having a prayer. So we pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity to gather around your word and also the opportunity to learn uh, about a religion that is apart from you, Lord. Uh, help us to be able to give a defense for our faith in you with gentleness and respect. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Rastafarianism, as we know it, and how they came uh, to be, uh, is very interesting. Uh, so, it emerged in Jamaica just, at, uh, just after a man named Rastafari Makanan, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, became Emperor Halal Selassie of Ethiopia in 1930. Okay. Uh, so we're going to look at our we're going to look at our page here and we're going to go through the history and teaching. So, Rastafarian has its roots in the Black Nationalist movement begun by a Jamaican named Marcus Garvey, uh, who lived in 1887 to 1940. In 1927 he announced that that in the future, a leader would emerge from Africa who would deliver the black urban masses. Three years later, in Ethiopia, Ras Tafari Makanen was crowned Emperor Selassie and given the title King of Kings, Lord of Lords, His Imperial Majesty of the Conquering Lion of the Tribe of Judah, Elect of God. He was seen as many by Jamaicans as a great liberator of blacks, but eventually his admirers would identify him in messianic, if not divine, terms. A new religion was thus spawned, named Rastafarianism, after the original name of Emperor Selassie. Many of the founders of this new religion would wind up in the United States in the 1960s and 1970s. They would be instrumental in providing the ideological backbone to the black nationalist movement in America. This would eventually the, spawn the Nation of Islam, which shares many similarities with Rastafarianism. There are probably about a million Rastafarians across the world today. Only about 5,000 live in America. Many Rastafarians believe Selassie is still alive today and thus they acknowledge him as a supreme being. Rastafarianism, and even more so the Nation of Islam, asserts the superiority of what it calls the black race because whites are largely responsible for bringing blacks out of their African homeland to places in the West like Jamaica and the West Indies, Rastafarianism reserves a special hatred for the white race. It envisions a future where blacks will take their vengeance on whites and return to the homeland of Ethiopia where God, that is Yah, will rule over them in what will be a heaven on earth. Rastafarians traditionally wear the colors of red and green, gold and black, Red represents the blood of the martyrs, green the fauna of Ethiopia. Gold is to remind them to observe a strict moral code. This moral code demands that one not, may not desecrate the body, keep it from eating pork and shellfish, desire and strive to ultimately unite the world under the governance of Yah, and so on. Some aspects of Rastafarianism are now making a comeback and have become popularized. This is primarily due to the influence of reggae music dreadlocks, and the consumption of marijuana, both part and parcel of Rastafarianism and are now part of popular culture. So, hmm, again, I can see that last part, especially uh, marijuana being very popular amongst our culture today, saying that that is, uh, that is almost a quote-unquote a sacrament that we partake in. So, here are some things Again, from that history that we just learned 
uh, for us to take out. A hatred of the white race. Future revenge on the wicked of the white race. Belief in the superiority of the black race. Future defeat of the Jamaican government. Preparation for returning to Africa. Acknowledgement of the status of Emperor Selassie as a supreme being. Three important terms in Rastafarianism are Babylon, which they mean is the white political power structure that Rastafarians are to make war against until its destruction. I and I, a concept of unity of divinity found within everything, yet Selassie is paradoxically a supreme being. So they would say that everything is a god then, uh, technically. That uh, there's no separation between creator and creation, that we can see the creator is in everything. And then Yah, the Rastafarian word for God. So how such a bizarre religion, how, how did that come to be created? Well, in light of Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 25, and the turmoil of the times, it seems that it was crafted to provide a unifying ideology with the divine pretension for the people of Jamaica. In many ways, Rastafarianism is a religion that seems to identify itself vis-a-vis -vis with Christianity, which Rastafarians in the Nation of Islam would call the white man's religion. Discuss ways in which a Christian could respond to this chart. I could think of one right off the top of my head that when we look at uh, the prophets and how they speak about how uh, the really about the Messiah, how the Messiah is going to gather all nations to themselves. The nations are going to come from afar. Um, we we see Jesus even speaking not in terms of skin color, but purely about all people. Even the apostles, St. Paul writes, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Uh, we, we don't see the color of skin. God doesn't see the color of skin. God sees the whole world and sinful people that need a savior. Uh, so very interesting. I, I, I don't understand that concept of a, a white religion other than because the predominance of Christianity first, I mean the history, Christianity first coming to Anglo-Saxons in, in Europe and then through slavery of, of black people actually learning about Jesus through, through, um, through white men, uh, through slave owners and slave traders. Uh, so uh, Christianity is a religion for all people, regardless of race, sex, social status, and so forth. And, and when we see that, we're going to see that begin to open up here when we go through uh, the, the Bible lessons, or the Bible quotes here from responding to Rastafarianism. So, uh, let's take a look at that. Matthew chapter 28, uh, verse 19. This is Jesus' great commission. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations. All nations. Is that... Is that just white or is that black? No, that's all people. Again, Galatians chapter 3, verses 27 through 28. There we hear that there is neither Jew nor Greek nor slave nor free nor male nor female, but all are one in Christ Jesus. In other words, when we look at Jesus' all-atoning death uh, on the cross and his resurrection from the dead, we see that that's not just for a particular race or nation, but it's for all people. Uh, Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40, that's where uh, Philip uh, meets a Ethiopian eunuch on the road to Damascus and shares with him the good news that's found in Jesus. Um, the Ethiopian is, is assumed to be uh, black. Um, Acts chapter 2, uh, verse 39, Peter is uh, preaching here 
of all whom God calls to himself. Again, God calls all people to him. Uh, Acts chapter 3, those who are sick or disabled, again, uh, we're not looking at skin color there, are we? Uh, Acts chapter 8, verses 4 through 25, Samaritans, those of mixed blood. I mean, those were people that were actually hated by full-blooded Jews. That now a Samaritan, a Samaritan, and those who formerly practiced satanic arts are now hearers and doers of the word. The gospel is proclaimed even to them. Acts chapter 10, we hear about the Gentiles, specifically Romans and military officers, hearing the gospel of Jesus for them. Acts chapter 13, those who have worshipped the devil and performed works in his name, the word of God, the good news found in Jesus is proclaimed to them. Acts chapter 16, a wealthy Gentile businesswoman hears the good news of Jesus for her. Acts chapter 16, a jailer and his family who was about to commit suicide. And yet he heard the good news given for him. Acts chapter 17, an, an, elect, an intellectual elite hears the good news. Acts chapter 21, the Jews hear the good news of Jesus for them. 1 Thessalonians 1, pagans and idolater, idolatrous worship, idol worshipers hear the good news. See, the good news of Jesus is for all people. It's not for whites. It's not for blacks. There's no superiority in race with God. He sent his son Jesus to die for all of us. And we, when we also then speak in love and gentleness with one another and see each other as uh, one that is precious in the eyes of God, one in which God sent Jesus to suffer, die, and rise for. It changes our whole perspective not to see race and color and ethnicity as barriers or as weaker or lesser vessels or as opportunities to put each other down, but as a distinct reminder that uh, we have a beautiful heritage in humanity that is different, but we can all share in one, one common thing that will unite us all for eternity, and that's faith in Jesus as our Savior, as the Messiah. Rastafarians have authoritative texts. They look at the Holy PB, which is known as the Black Man's Bible. Again, it, there's this weird division in that way. Uh, the real authority of major figure, though, is Selassie, the Supreme Being. Have yourselves, why don't, why don't you look up John chapter 14, verse 6. I'm going to just quote that from you because I am quite familiar with it. That's where Jesus is talking to Thomas and, and to the rest of the disciples. Uh, Lord, uh, just before verse 6, Thomas says, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus says to Thomas and to the disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So there is no other supreme being in heaven and on earth that has been born or will be born than Jesus Christ himself. So, in other words, Emperor Selassie is not the supreme divine being. Jesus Christ is. And that is a, a very dangerous thing to put the creature, just merely a creature, into uh, a, a divine position. Uh, and then lastly, it says, the work of Christ by virtue of his person trumps Selassie. This is the appropriate Christian response to Rastafarianism. 
So very interesting again, sharing our love, pointing to Jesus as uh, uh, the greatest and best news, uh, and and sharing our love and, and and looking at each other, not in the context of race or color of skin, but as one that Jesus suffered and died and rose for. Would you pray with me? We pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you sent your Son to seek and save the lost and to be so that the world might be reconciled to you. Give us courage to proclaim this message to all who have not heard the message of total liberation. We ask this in the name of your Son who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessings on your week, and Lord willing, we'll see you next week as we talk about our last session, and that is atheism. Look forward to discussing that with you. Take care. Bye-bye.